what is distributed caching and how it is different from normal caching that we have been learning so far in the series. In this video, we will discuss everything you need to know about distributed caching. Before we start, remember this no single solution fits all use cases and simply watching videos or reading articles won't help you to develop skills. You need to think critically and find solutions yourself. That's why we raise questions to you multiple times during the video and we expect you to think for any possible solutions to those problems and share with us. So try to answer the questions we ask in the video. It will help you to build necessary problem solving skills. Because when you start working in projects, that's the only thing you need to design proper solutions. Now to the main topic. So as of now, we have this simple architecture where our application connects to a cache service for faster access and a database for permanent storage. Now suppose the traffic on our application increased 10 times. Now to handle the increased traffic, we can think of few changes in our application architecture. We can think of scaling our application so that more requests can be distributed for application processing. This will reduce the load on single application server. But if we keep only one cache instance, it might become a bottleneck. With high traffic, this single cache get overwhelmed that will lead to slow responses or even failures. So what is the solution? The solution is distributed caching. Instead of relying on a single cache instance, we can use distributed caching to spread the cache data across multiple servers. This way, different requests can be sent to different cache servers, which will improve performance and also makes the overall cache system more fault tolerant. Let me break it down with an example. Imagine we are running an e-commerce application like Amazon where user frequently fetch the product details. And we know the scale of Amazon. If they store all the cache data in a single server, it will definitely crash under high load. With distributed caching, different product details can be stored across multiple cache servers. So when the user requests data, it can be fetched from multiple nodes. That ensures the faster response and reduced load on a single cache instance. So if the distributed caching is so good, then why we are not using it everywhere instead of single instance cache. Just like other things, distributed caching also have specific use cases. It is similar to whether you should use monolithic application architecture or microservice scenario. Microservices are great, but they come with a great complexity to manage. Similarly, distributed caching is great, but it comes with added complexity and management. In case your application is small and has very limited traffic, a single node cache like memcached or ehcached might be enough. But if you are running a high traffic system like Netflix, Amazon or Facebook, then a distributed caching system like Redis cluster, Hazelcast or Amazon Elastic Cache is the way to go. Now let's see how exactly the distributed caching works in real world applications. Let me start with an analogy. Imagine a big restaurant kitchen preparing food for thousands of customers daily. It serves different foods such as grilled items, desserts, drinks and many more categories. If all the orders are handled by a single chef, then that chef will quickly get overwhelmed which will cause burnout and delays. And those delays will cause dissatisfied customer. And a dissatisfied customer is something which no business can afford. So to solve this problem, the kitchen can be divided into multiple sections. One for grilling, one for desserts and one for drinks. Each of the sections will have different chefs to handle the related orders. This strategy ensures that no single chef is overloaded and the orders are served quickly. Isn't this exactly we want from our software applications too? We want no server should be overloaded loaded and we should be able to serve the clients as quickly as possible. Distributed caching works in the similar way. Instead of one central cache storing and serving all the requests, multiple cache servers handle different pieces of data. When an application requests information, it gets routed to the appropriate cache server that holds that particular data. Now the big question is, how do we decide which cache server stores which data? There will be a component responsible for routing the request in a distributed caching system. It can be at client side, cluster side or a proxy in the middle. But we need to understand on what basis the data will be divided. Now let's try to understand few of those approaches. The first approach is hashing. Hashing is a general technique that converts data into a fixed length value. In caching context, we use hash function to identify which cache server will store that particular piece of data. 
So first we need to decide on what parameter we want to divide the data on. Suppose this is based on the product ID. So we will pass that product ID to a hash function to get a hash number. Then we will divide it by the total number of cache servers and take the remainder. This will give us the server number starting with zero. If you remember, this is exactly how the hash map work in Java. Now let's try to understand this with a very simple example and with quantifiable numbers. Now suppose we have five cache servers and we want to cache a particular product ID for that what we will do we will hash the product ID now let's say if the hash value turns out to be 12 then we will divide that 12 by 5 which will give us a remainder of 2 that means this particular product ID will be stored on server 2 this technique is known as modulo hashing it ensures that the data is evenly spread across available servers now we just saw how basic hashing works taking a key running it through a hash function and then using modulo to decide which cache server stores the data. Pretty straightforward, right? But there is a problem with this approach. What will happen when a cache server fails or a new one is added? Now taking the same example where we have five cache servers and we are using our hash function to distribute data across them. Everything works fine. But one day we decide to add a six server to handle more traffic. Now since our formula depends on the total number of cache nodes, adding one server completely changes how the data is assigned. A product ID that was previously mapped to cache server 2 might go to server 0 now. Due to this, most of the keys are pointing to different locations. Our cache hit ratio will drop and we will end up querying the database instead. That will further increase the load on our system. Now instead of directly mapping keys to a fixed number of cache nodes, we take a different approach. This approach is consistent hashing. Its main goal is to minimize the data redistribution when a server is added or removed from the cluster. In this, the data and server nodes are assigned a location on a ring. Based on the hash function, the data is then stored in the first cache server that appears clockwise from the position. I'll not deep dive into consistent hashing in this video because we will have a separate video on this topic. This, and also this is a very important topic from system design interview perspective. Now moving ahead with another approach which is sharding. In this we divide the complete data set into smaller shards or pieces with each server storing a subset of data. For example, to store user profiles in cache using this approach, we can store all users having name starting with A to M on server 1 and from N to Z on server 2. Or in a global e-commerce application like Amazon, user details can be split based on the geographical location. So in this, we do not store complete data in a single cache server but divide it into multiple pieces known as shards and store them on different cache servers. Sharding itself is also a very complicated concept and not really easy to manage because some shards may be accessed more frequently than others which will result in shard hotspots and also if the shards data grows unevenly then a shard rebalancing will also be required. So we will discuss sharding completely in a separate video as well. Another approach is replication using master-slave architecture. In this Cache data is duplicated across multiple servers for fault tolerance. So unlike sharding, every cache server will have complete cache data. Out of all those cache servers, one master server handles all the writes and updates. Multiple slave servers holds the copy of data and can serve the read request. In case the current master server fails, a slave server will be promoted as a master server. In this approach, since the data is stored multiple times, it needs a higher memory allocation. Also, there is a synchronization overhead for keeping all the replicas updated and in sync. Now here is a question for you. Can you tell me how these issues can be optimized? I'll be waiting for your system design thinking in the comment section because let me remind it again. Just watching some videos or reading some articles will not help you until you start thinking to find solutions. So go ahead and give it a try. Now, instead of opting for a single approach, we can try and implement hybrid approaches also. Because in real world enterprise architectures, we often combine multiple approaches. For example, we can use sharding along with the replication. Data is sharded across multiple cache servers, but each shard is replicated to a backup server for fault tolerance. For example, we have Redis cluster with replicas. In this, each shard has primary server and a replica. Now, few final thoughts in the end to sum up what we have discussed and which approach can be used under what scenario. If you want faster reads and better fault tolerance, then you can go with replication with master-slave approach. If you want better scalability and efficient memory usage, then you can go with sharding. And if you want best of both, 
do sharding with replication. The data is partitioned but also has replicas for failure recovery. This is how distributed caching is architected in real world enterprise systems. If you learned something today, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep learning.